let's just make this really clear right off the bat. I don't want to do this to you. I'm not interested in talking about Santa, ho, 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 jingle bells, hot, hot chocolate. Like, no. Especially, especially not that four letter word, snow. Because I don't know what happened to fall. It fell into a black hole and I didn't get to enjoy it. I don't know what I was doing. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the retail world bids me, forces me, compels me to do otherwise, even though my house currently looks like this. So we've got to do a little something for some winter cheer, a little holiday spirit, a little Santa love. Let's do something, anything. Walter? Are you feeling it yet? Let's just pretend. Okay, Walter is currently pouting by the porch in his sweater and my fiddle leaf fern is never going to forgive me. I can feel the anger radiating from its tropical leaves. Might also have to do with the fact that I brought it inside. Um, it enjoyed its summer on the porch pretending it wasn't in Indiana, and now the harsh reality has set in, and I'm pretty sure it's going to punish me all winter. I have four holiday releases to share with you. Future Steph interrupting past Steph to tell you that I'm going to show you four Christmas releases. I actually planned on five, but I decided it was too much. So that fifth release, is just going to be my Christmas gift to you. So if you would like a very substantial, like this is not a little dinky freebie. It is a very substantial pattern. If you would like that for free, sign up for my newsletter down below. And I am very pleased with all of them. I'm going to start with something that you've seen before. And then I have a small tart. And then my two big releases that I'm pretty proud of. So first, the pattern that you've seen before is December Dance. This was released as a kit for Needlework Expo in the fall. And now I'm releasing the pattern just for the pair. So you won't be able to get the ornament that the kit was for, but releasing the pair of red-footed boobies doing their little holiday jig on the beach. Red-footed boobies are real, in case you don't know. Uh, they're fantastic. This is stitched 
all DMC. Two over two on light lavender Lugana. And it was finished for me by Lois at Lady.Creates on this little paper mache box. Adorable. Um, <laughs> you'll be able to tell from all of my holiday releases that for Christmas, I definitely gravitate toward brighter colors than what is traditional. And so, yeah, <laughs> if you're like me and you like a nice, bright, quirky Christmas, then I am happy to be your cross-stitch designer. If you like, um, mauve and forest green welcome anyway moving on welcome <laughs> i feel i'm feeling very awkward i don't know why okay uh my next release is part four of my happy habitats series this was a series I did this year of four seasonal tarts and it started, I'll just go through them really quickly. This is Henrietta Hedgehog. Is that what she's called? That's her name. The pattern is called Hedgehog House and this was for the spring. I will get it together. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is Eagle Manor and it is the summer. And then in the fall, I had Vulture Villa. For Christmas, or just the winter season, uh, we have Polar Bear Abode. And little Peter Polar Bear is just sitting outside his festive house in his little winter hat. And he's adorable. Uh, I have not glued him down. I just want to show you how easy it is to finish tart. I used uh, Vana the Twisted Stitchers tutorial on how to finish a tart and you can see, I mean all the rest of them look exactly like this only I glued them to the pan. If you've ever made a yo-yo where you gather the fabric and then pull the string a tart is just a big yo-yo, only it has stuffing in it and there's a piece of mat board on the bottom. They're really easy. Um, the hardest part is just making the stuffing lay evenly so you know you have a nice smooth dome finish, but all you do is just fiddle with it until it looks pretty good and then you cinch it up, you glue some mat board on it, you glue some lace around the edge. It's not intimidating. So I, I recommend Vana's tutorial. And um, thank you for your support of the Happy Habitat series. They've been stitched a lot through this year, I think because, well, they're cute, but they also are really fast. Uh, you could finish this in a couple weekends. Next up, I have a big one. <laughs> it's a big one and it's, has been fiddled with design has taken me longer than any design I've ever done. I don't know why most of my designer friends know this. I struggle with Christmas and holiday and winter releases. I do not understand why. Um, there's so much potential subject matter. Uh, snowmen, Santa, reindeer, I mean, there's like, stockings, like, there's a plethora of material to work with, and yet, I have this problem with cr Christmas ideas, and I, I don't, like, I don't know what my, my issue is. I need therapy? I, I don't know. <laughs> but this one, this one, I've messed with uh, probably for three years and it finally became something I liked. This is called 
and to all a good night. And it finally became something pretty awesome. Uh, this is stitched on 36 count raw petite point not petite point, mini dot linen. So this linen is exactly like the polka dot linen most of us are fam familiar with called petite point, only the dots are like a quarter of the size. I love polka dots. I think they're so happy and fun, but the petite point linen I always felt was too overwhelming with how big the polka dots were. They always, f they fight with whatever you're stitching on and they're too big to look like snowflakes. But this is a newer fabric from Zweigart. Uh, it's a raw color and it has mini polka dots and they make the best snowflakes. I think, um, I'm not sure what other fabrics the mini dot comes in or what other counts, but this is 36 count. It fits in a traditional size frame. It's an 11 by 14. I always forget the dimensions, <laughs> uh, but you can pick up this size frame off the shelf at a big box store and it just has some lovely things like a Clydesdale horse pulling a snowman and little tiny candles in the windows and a house with a cat on the roof and a peacock and random flying reindeer. <laughs> this house is, you know, some solid stitching. Uh, the color on that is Meadow by Weeks Dye Works. Uh, you would think that the floss pack for this pattern, which I will grab, would be massive, but it's not. Um, I only make floss packs out of the overdyeds because I figure a lot of you have DMC. I only used uh, four, four weeks dye works colors in this one. And so the, the floss pack is a smaller size. And just so you know, there are four skeins of the green. So that's not too terrible, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Mary Mary's skirt was more significant than four skeins, but uh, there it is. It's fun. And I would love to see the house done in different colors if you're not into a uh, funky green house. I think the rest of the piece is so neutral that you could change the color of the house and everything's still going to look awesome in my opinion. So that's and to all a good night. Hope you like it. Now we come to what I think is my favorite release for the holidays. This is a pair of patterns. You get both patterns in the package and it's called Glad Tidings. So they're these really cute uh, vertical oriented stitches. They are the same size. They use the same fabric, the same floss pack. And I probably shouldn't try to hold them up together, but here they are. So if you are uh, familiar with the song Angels We Have Heard on High, you know you sing the word Gloria for a really long time. I've always thought, <laughs> I don't know, I've always thought it was really kind of funny, but um, that's what inspired the beginning of this pattern. I just wanted to make a lot of bows. <laughs> and I love, love, love how these angels turned out. I wanted to make them all different. No need to be bored. And I love their tiny, little feet. Really, really cute. The fabric I chose for this pair of patterns is 36 count stonewashed linen by Seraphim Fabrics. And I did stock that linen in my store as well as some Lugana and Ada so that everybody could be happy. <laughs> but the color looks like uh, stonewashed jeans. 
So it's uh, perfect for a sky because it's this light blue with white and sometimes yellowish modeling. Really beautiful to work on. The second one has a verse of scripture on it and the manger. I love how the star came out and just some fun borders. These, this pair just makes me happy. Um, again, with the not traditional colors, um, although it could be easily changed uh, to whatever, whatever Christmas colors you prefer. Uh, the floss pack has four, five dinky dies. Um, I've been getting more into dinky dies. I hope no one minds. Um, and then, <laughs> no one minds. And then three classic color works. So, I mean, these are really fun colors. Love it. And last but not least, this release has a bag from Tara, the 805 Stitcher. Um, so this bag goes with Glad Tidings. The bag will come with the pattern and the floss pack. And this is what fabric we picked out. Which is Nutcracker. I realize it doesn't really go with the theme of the pattern, but the colors completely match that floss pack. Um, it's adorable fabric. So there's two color choices, this chalkboard color and the aqua with the snowflakes. I did not order enough of these from Tara. I don't really know what I was thinking. Oh, I didn't show you the nutcracker jar. Oh my gosh. So cute. I don't know what I was thinking when I ordered the quantities I did. I must have been tired. Maybe I ordered them on a day when I shipped too many packages. <laughs> I don't know, but um, there's a limited quantity of those. And um, my apologies if you really want one and they sell out. I <sighs> Yeah. Holiday sorriness. I, I'm not sure what else to say about that. Um, so those are my four Christmas, holiday, whatever you want, whatever um, winter means to you, <laughs> releases. And uh, don't make fun of your brother, okay? It's not his fault. Be good, or I will put a sweater on you as well, okay? I want to show you the things I've stitched on since we spoke last. Um, a couple of them were Christmas, so I, I must have been feeling it some days. <laughs> uh, I have not pulled this project out, which is uh, Prairie Schooler the Night Before Christmas. I haven't pulled this out since Christmas Eve of last year. That's really weird. Uh, I don't tend to do things like that. I'm stitching this on 32 count Picture This Plus title. Beautiful blue-green color. And I started working on the tiny Santa sleigh. This piece is going to be so adorable. I need to actually stitch on it. Speaking of Santa, that jolly old soul, I made some progress on uh, the Sweet Santa Sal. Uh, this pattern is by Miss Prim. You can find her patterns on Etsy. This guy is adorable. I over dyed some DMC myself uh, to do this one, and um, his beard and his mustache and his eyebrows are all done in whisper and I decided to bite the bullet and do the whisper. I, I don't really, I don't mind stitching with it. I mean, it's not as easy or pleasant as stitching with <laughs> regular floss. Um, so you probably can't even tell. 
there can you tell his uh, eyebrows are poofy and I'm working on his beard the only thing that kind of bothers me with the whisper is that it tends to be thicker and thinner is that true I, I can't tell if um, if you haven't seen whisper floss before this is what it looks like it's super fuzzy um, if you've stitched with this extensively I think what's happening is I think your needle tends to bunch the fibers together you know what I'm saying as it goes down I think it starts to kind of collect and make certain sections thicker than others am I making any sense because you can see like there are certain rows that are super thick and there's super ro some rows that are thin I think once I'm done and I take a clean toothbrush to it and kind of rub it over it won't look as splotchy but I don't like that okay now that you've heard my existential whisper thoughts who cared to hear those <sighs> let me show you another project I am keeping up so far with my first ever mystery stitch along which is called rookie woods from tempting tangles designs now <laughs> I have a hard time with this. I, I will be honest. I'm glad I'm doing this, even though I th overthink things way too much. I've never done a mystery cell, and because of that, I, I feel like unless you've done it, you don't really understand maybe some of the um, thoughts that would come up as you're being led along mysteriously. <clears throat> not knowing what you're going to be stitching. When I started this, I thought this is a very interesting color palette. Uh, the theme is fall and um, spookiness and Macbeth. The color palette doesn't really say to me fall and spookiness and Macbeth, and I'm not criticizing the designer. She gets to do whatever. Whatever she wants uh, but I had asked my Facebook group uh, do you like a mystery do you want a mystery stitch along or not a mystery stitch along and overwhelmingly people said not a mystery obviously there's a plenty of people who enjoy the mystery aspect but a lot of comments alluded to it depends on how much I trust the designer or talking about how you would join a mystery stitch along and you were disappointed. I don't want to say I'm disappointed yet. It's, I'm just wondering if it's my taste. All that blathering to show you this. Here's where we're at. I'm stitching on old stationary 32 count linen by Seraphim Fabrics and I don't know. Uh, I don't really know. So the reason why the mystery is kind of bothering me is that because I don't have the whole picture of what this is going to look like, I feel like I can't change colors and I probably could and be fine uh, but I don't know um, because I don't have the whole picture I feel like I don't have enough information the other thing is I'm questioning whether this is my taste and so because I don't have the picture I don't know if I'm going to want to invest all the time in getting really far on it 
Um, and again, I don't mean any disrespect to the designer. She gets to do whatever she wants. Um, it's just the mystery part that is not jiving with me. What I do like, and this doesn't have to do with the mystery, but with the stitch along aspect, I like how it's kind of like a school assignment. You're just done. Like once you finish that part of the pattern, there's nothing else you can do. You have to put it aside and work on something else. That's kind of fun um, that there's a stopping point and then you have something to anticipate in a couple weeks. This one comes out every two weeks and the pattern pieces are pretty small. This is three pieces of the pattern. So I don't know where this one is going to end up, but I've been glad just for the experience of you know feeling what it's like on the other side of a stitch along having led a couple myself uh i want to treat treat the experience uh in a way that pleases the most people and doesn't like disappoint anyone so i am going to talk about uh my 2022 stitch along after i show you my last whip here my last project I'm hoping to have done by the time I see you again. It is Huckleberry Farm by the Blue Flower. Uh, my friend Janine McGowan designed this. Isn't it gorgeous? I'm stitching it on Haunted by Picture This Plus. I have my full conversion on my website under News and Freebies. So all I have left is the bear, and there's a few motifs that go here, and then it's a wrap. I'm really excited. Um, and when I say conversion, uh, I simply took Janine's pick, um, choices, and I wanted to use some gas. Like, so none of this color glory goes to me. It's all her design. I just wanted to be fussy and use more gentle arts. The sun is kind of blowing me out, but you get the picture. There we go, that's better. See, that's what it actually looks like. <laughs> okay, so I wanna talk a little bit about some exciting things that I have coming um, next year. So yes, the stitch along uh, will be starting January 1st. I am going to give you plenty of time for deciding whether you want to join. I'm going to show you what the whole pattern looks like this time and you'll have you'll have a chance to gather supplies or do whatever you want to do. Uh, but the stitch along is going to be called Marvelous World. It has a tropical theme. It uses some really cool threads. Um, I can't wait to show it to you. It's so much better than last year's stitch along pattern. Last year's stitch along funky menagerie can just like bow the knee. Take a seat. You were cute and fun. Move along. Prepare the way for a much more majestic pattern. I love this one so much. Uh, the second thing I'm sorry, I got distracted. Willoughby, my dear, sweet Maine Coon, loves to go downstairs into my office, find packing materials, and drag them upstairs. I don't know why he does it, but it's one of his favorite things. I find it highly annoying. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny to see him walking around with a giant thing of bubble wrap trailing behind him. Hilarious, but... Do you think I want to use bubble wrap with little cat teeth marks in it? No, I don't. <laughs> Not to mention he goes around collecting the lint with aforementioned packing material, so then I have to get rid of it. <laughs> anyway, he walked by with um, a Ziploc bag in his mouth. Uh, the second thing we need to talk about is... <laughs> in 2022, I am going to be hosting a monthly club. Here's the first piece of info, much more info to come. Membership is going to open on December 2nd and you'll have plenty of uh, talking and sneak peeks before then. 
Today I'm just going to tell you the title of the club. I'm also going to tell you it is an inexpensive club to join. The title of the club, come a little closer, is the Bird Crush Club. You heard me. Ugh. It's called the Bird Crush Club. And I hope just the title flips your skirt, floats your boat, and tickles your funny bone. I know, all that was a little personal. But aren't we friends? The Bird Crush Club. Coming soon. I also did an interview with uh, Becca of Sambri Stitches. We'll link down below. We had a little chit chat, blah, blah, blah about myself. That is all I had to share with you. I really hope that you will answer the question down below for a giveaway. Woo! I uh, turned that around because I totally forgot. Um, I'm going to give away a copy, one copy of each of my Christmas releases all to one person down below I want you to write the word feeling I was sharing my angsty uh, I don't want to talk about Christmas feelings at the beginning of this video uh, use the word feeling or feelings to tell me how you're feeling about the holidays um, I've noticed people are seem to be decorating for Christmas earlier and earlier I don't know how I feel about this. Um, I'm not ready. I'm just not ready. Those are my feelings. You share your uh, holiday, fall and winter feelings down below. Next time I will draw a name. Don't forget to sign up for my newsletter down below to get that awesome Christmas freebie. That's all I had to say. I will talk to you later, friends. Ta-ta.